In this video, I was determined to make some tents with realistic textures, but keep them quick, easy, and cheap. Welcome to the archive. My name's Matt. I wanted these tents to be more detailed than you can achieve with the more common tissue paper or baby wipes. Ideally, I wanted a cross-hatched linen style texture across the piece, while also retaining the ability to bend it into interesting shapes, and hopefully still being reasonably cheap and easy to make plenty of. And also ideally stainable rather than painted to preserve more detail and texture. Am I asking too much? My first idea was to multi-layer cheesecloth over a rough framework of cocktail sticks, folding in the frayed edges using tacky glue. But as you can see, this didn't go so well. It was a bit fiddly. Okay, so that didn't work, but it did give me an idea for the method that did. I used that template that I'd printed out for the first method, which is available for free on my Patreon linked below, and used that as the framework instead tacky gluing a four layer thick piece of cheesecloth to the back of it with a reasonable amount of tacky glue. It's better to use too much than too little. Once that was dry, I cut it out one side at a time using a sharp knife, being careful to cut hard and smooth while pressing down to make sure that the cloth didn't fray. Once a side was cut, I took a blob of PVA glue on my finger and dabbed it on the exposed edge, letting it dry a bit before doing the next one, which basically means it's a good idea to do these in batches. Once I'd cut out all of the sides, I folded all of the lines sharply using a ruler, including the two tabs, and used some tacky glue to seal those in the right place, before sealing the final triangle over those, making sure that the edges were neatly sealed with tacky glue. Now I have my basic shape, but don't worry, it's not staying that pristine. I used a sharp sculpting tool, though you could use a sharp nail, pencil, or pretty much anything else really, and punched two holes in the corner, following the line of the corner of the tent. This gave me the space to slot in my tent frame. I also widened these a bit with a cocktail stick to make the next bit a little bit easier. I trimmed down some cocktail sticks to two inches long and carved some chunks off the ends to make them look more rough cut before hot gluing them in place with a little bit sticking out of the top and a bit sticking out of the bottom. Once they were all in, I trimmed down the bottom to the height that I wanted, still leaving a little bit showing for the extra detail, which also really helps when you place them on uneven surfaces. I actually stained these with black wash once in place to give them more of a weather-worn look. This is the exact same black wash that I use in the cavern video, the usual water slash medium mix with pure black ink. Now everything was in place, I squashed the piece down into a rougher, more cloth-like shape, which is pretty easy to do with paper, but you can wet the inside to make it a bit easier if you have a shape in mind. Finally, I added entirely optional details, pulling apart some string for the threads and tying knots around the sticks in a figure of eight. I mean, roughly. I have no idea what I'm doing with knots. I mean, I was in the scouts briefly, but I was not a good scout. Any excess thread, I just cut off. Though you have an option here for some more detail, it just takes a little bit longer. You can leave one thread attached and tie it to a cut down piece of cocktail stick, which again, I've cut to be a bit ragged and stained black then extend it out as though it were a tent peg and use liquid super glue to harden it. I found it useful to use blue tack to raise up both pieces here because it keeps them in place, while I use a cocktail stick to apply the glue itself, dribbling some in a puddle on some parchment paper and using it like a forbidden palette. This makes the thread much tougher and keeps it in place, but while it's flexible, it will snap if you completely abuse it. So use it with a little bit of care, if you care. I also added toggles for the tent door by tying a knot in thread and cutting it off before attaching it to the tent with a dab of tacky glue. Oh, and I added some weathering using my dirt and grout mix and a makeup brush around the bottom. I kept this quite light. It's much easier to add more than it is to remove some because you, you pretty much can't. And that's piece one. Quick, easy, cheap, detailed. Hits all the good spots. But I'm not done, because I'm obsessive. So stick around and I'll show you my other lunatic designs after thanking those awesome people who make my obsession possible and allow me to spend my time helping other people, which is something I sincerely love doing. You can help the channel and get a vote on what video gets done next by joining my growing gang of crafters on Patreon. There's a link above, so please check it out. The next two builds are fairly similar to each other, so I'm gonna throw them together for this next bit. Basically, they're two variant tents that involve that most human of attributes, laziness. Why make a full tent when a roof will do? Both pieces use a similar method of using the cheesecloth as before, except this time we're using kitchen roll to get just a little bit of extra flexibility. I'm also layering it on both sides. 
Luckily, that's a lot easier because the shape is just a square. I started by layering it on one side of the kitchen roll, using PVA glue this time in a thinner layer, and using the cheesecloth only too thick on each side. Once that dried, I flipped it and did the same on the other side, before cutting it to the size I needed and sealing the edges with a few dabs more of PVA glue. Speaking of cheesecloth, it's important to note that it comes in different thread counts. Mega cheap cheesecloth is usually less finely threaded, and often a fairly dull shade of pure white. This cloth I picked up is more like, well, cloth, and it's a perfect shade for a linen tent from the get-go. It's actually still cheap, and you even get more of it than you do with the uber cheap stuff. So yeah, it's kind of worth it. Anyway, to get the poles that would hold these pieces to stand up right on my first version, I cheated and super glued them to some rocks that would conveniently look like they were placed right next to the pole. Anyway, on my second piece, I left them freestanding. Adding the rocks makes them more stable and easier to place on flat ground, while having them freestanding means they can be placed on grass like this, or on a tower like this. Either way, I made some holes in the cloth for the poles to poke through, just like for the smaller tent supports, wrapping some more thread around the top of the pole in a knot for some extra detail. And to be sure it stayed in place, I super glued the pole underneath. Getting that natural looking inward bend in the middle was actually pretty easy. All I ended up needing to do was bend it in half both ways and then bend the corners back down so they'd stand up straight. I also added some dirt to this piece, though this time I was focusing on the middle where it bent downwards, showing the dirt gathering through rainwater that had evaporated. The smaller lazy man's tent was made from a few cocktail stick stubs stained black, a bit like the tent pegs, super glued to a two inch long cocktail stick and wrapped with thread. From there, I punched those stubs through the cloth again and super glued them in place on the bottom underneath before basically doing the same thing with the poles at the front, but shorter this time. This one is probably the easiest to make and is perfect for bandits, goblins, orcs, and other lazy git, uh, I mean, dangerous marauders. Now those are nice and all, but any self-respecting commander or warlord wouldn't be seen dead in one, so we need something a bit more classy. And being able to sneak inside and murder said evil warlord while he's busy would be a nice touch. To do this, I used another template and the same cloth techniques that I showed on the first tent, mostly. The main difference was that I double-sided the four sheet thick cheesecloth on the lower area, partially because our warlord is fancy and has thick luxurious cloth for his tent, but also so it'll look just as good on the inside. Speaking of which, I glued some thread across the lines before attaching the cheesecloth, because I thought that it would be completely hidden when fully attached and dry. This kind of fortunately turned out to be not true. You can see the lines through the cloth, which is great because you can skip this step and just use the template on the inside of the tent where it'll be mostly hidden. The template needs gluing together before attaching to anything, because it's longer than a single sheet of A4. Once it was dry, I cut along the template lines, PVA glued the edges, and bent all the folds against my ruler. At this point, I decided it was just a tad, I mean, just, just a smidge, just an iota, too tall. So I trimmed half an inch from the bottom and updated the template for you guys so you guys get it right first time. After this little mishap, I bent the corners and flat areas in a little bit to make it look more like cloth and connected the doorway using another stained cocktail stick and some tacky glue. I also added some cocktail stick support poles to the corners, tacky gluing one in each corner, and added two cross beams per side sticking out. I used two cocktail sticks glued together to get them long enough, and then just covered the middle with some thread. I did this for both to keep the wall straight, and to give me something to tie the tent peg ropes on, just like the smaller tents. I really like the realistic look that this gives them. For the interior, I also added a pole as tall as the tent walls to represent the central pole when the roof is taken off. Again, held upright with rock, pole's best friend. Finally, I did one last template, four layered cheesecloth and all on a single side and tacky glued it into shape, bending the overlaps and adding a cocktail stick pole sticking out of the top and cross beams sticking out of the sides, which don't need to be full length, just enough to show it poking out. This should slot nicely onto the tent walls and give a good sized tent with a playable interior. I chose not to paint colourful designs onto these because I wanted to use them for Hobgoblins, Zentarum and other organised evil factions. But if you did want to paint them, it's as simple as masking tape and either spray paint or airbrush ink. Airbrush works better, but both work. Finally, finally, I made some balsa wood banner poles, which connect the tiles like I show for the signpost in the road video, which is basically a bit of wire and some blue tack beneath a pinhole in the floor. 
These banners were a little bit of an experiment in playing with printable fabric, which you can use in pretty much any inkjet printer from what I understand, and give some pretty awesome results that can be torn into ragged banners far easier and in much greater detail than paper printouts could possibly allow. I also made some new Evil Faction banners for this. All of these banners are downloadable for patrons, and the Zentarum banner and one original design is downloadable for free for everyone. Adding a few extra designs like this, rather than having everything copy and paste, I think really adds to a scene and makes it more memorable. And of course, these tents go perfectly with the war camp accessories that I've shown previously, and the modular scaffolds make fantastic camp towers. Both of those videos are linked in the description. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. And until next time, I'll be in the archive.